Let's look at a couple more examples with trig functions. Uh, this first one, a lot easier than it might look at first. Okay, we see all the, you know, the powers of sine, we see the cosine, it looks a little bit intimidating. Um, but this one is actually quite straightforward as long as you remember what this notation means, right? This sine to the 4x really just means the function sine x raised to the fourth power, okay? So you have a very obvious composition here, right? We have the sine function plugged into this power function. We have the derivative of sine sitting there. So this is kind of like a poster child for substitution, right? So we do the obvious thing. We let u is equal to sine x du will be cos x times dx. And we can plug all that in. So this is going to be simply the integral of u to the 4 du. Power rule gives 1 over 5 u to the 5 plus c. And all that's left to do is substitute back. All right? So this is going to be sine raised to the fifth power plus our constant. Simple enough, right? Um, these are ones that with a little bit of practice you can probably do this in one go with even, without even bothering to write down the substitution, right? It, it, once you've seen a few of them it becomes pretty clear how to proceed. Now, this next one may be a little bit less obvious, right? Now we've got an even power of cosine and, and there's no sine hanging around, right? If there was a sine x here, then yeah, u should be cos x. We substitute, we're off, similar to the previous example. But all we have is cos, cos by itself. So what do you do? Well, one of the important results that comes up quite a bit in integrals involving powers in, of sine and cosine, especially when there's even powers, is to remember that there are these power reduction formulas, right? Um, so remember that cosine of 2x can be written as either, well, it's initially cos squared x minus sine squared x. But we can solve that, right? We can replace sine squared by 1 minus cos squared, and we can get 2 cos squared x minus 1. Or we could replace cos squared with 1 minus sine squared and get 1 minus 2 sine squared x. Well, the nice thing about this is that you can solve for either cos squared or sine squared if those do happen to turn up in your integral um, and get rid of that even power, right? So we get these so-called power reduction formulas. In this case, the one that we want is that cos squared x is 1 plus cosine of 2x divided by 2. Okay. So all we do is we actually substitute, right? So this time it's, it's not a substitution in this sense, it's just a, applying a trig identity, right? So cos squared becomes, and we can even write it like this, 1 half plus 1 half cosine of 2x dx, okay? And now we integrate term by term, right? This is just a constant, so we know when we take the antiderivative, we just get a constant times x. Cosine 2x, okay, technically there is maybe a u substitution here, um, right? In this term, I guess we could let u equal to 2x. du would be 2dx, so we've got to divide by 2. Um, but you might have had enough practice by now that you can do one like this in your head and jump straight to the answer and say, okay, so we're going to get from here... 1 half times x, right? Antiderivative of cos 2x, we're going to get sine 2x, but we've got to divide by 2, right? Because if we took the derivative of sine 2x, we get an extra 2 from the chain rule. So we have 1 half, we've got to multiply by a half again. So we get 1 over 4 sine 2x plus our constant, right? Again, um, in case you missed that last step, let me just point out that when we're doing when we're doing cos 2x dx, we can let u equal to 2x. So du is 2 dx. So half du is dx. 
and this becomes the integral of cos u times a half times du, and that just gives you one half sine u, which is one half sine two x. Okay. All right. Let's take a look at this last one. Um, now, once we get into kind of, you know, there are powers for both sine and cosine, you have to start thinking a little bit carefully. Um, we'll see more examples like this pretty soon as we get to the section on trigonometric integrals. We're going to look at ones involving powers of sine and cosine, ones involving powers of secant and tangent. Um, so what do you do here? Well, we've just done this, this approach for dealing with a power of, of, you know, an even power of cosine, right? Cos squared, we say, oh yeah, you just do this and you proceed. So you might think maybe you should do that here. It, if you do it, you're probably going to end up running around in circles. What happens is if you do have, you know, if, if both of these were even powers, if you had sine squared times cos squared, then yeah, you'd kind of be stuck. You'd have to do a power reduction formula for both of them. You'd have to write down the corresponding formula for sine squared, which is 1 minus cos 2x for sine squared um, over 2. Multiply everything out. Uh, it's a bit of a mess, but with the even power, there's, there's a little trick you can do. You can say, well, look, sine cubed x is sine x times sine squared x. And sine squared x, I can write as 1 minus cos squared x. Okay? So that means I can take this integral and I can write it as so, hang on. So we do this. So the integral of sine cubed x cos squared x dx equals the integral of sine x times 1 minus cos squared x times cos squared x times dx. And let me multiply that cos squared in. So what we have is, and I'm going to rearrange slightly. So we have this. We have cos squared x minus cos to the fourth power times sine x times dx. And now there's maybe a more obvious substitution, right? This suggests that we should let u equal to sine or sorry, u should be uh, cosine, right? Because we see the powers of cos there. du will be minus sine x dx. And if we put all that in, what we're going to get is u squared minus u to the fourth times so sine x dx is going to become minus du. Okay. So I get minus one third u cubed plus one over five u to the five plus c. And I guess I've run out of room, but we know what the last step should be. We got to put back u is equal to cos, right? So we're going to get minus one third cos cubed u plus one over five cos to the five u, or sorry, uh, cos to the five x. Um, so cos cubed x, cos to the 5x, plus c um, gives us a result, right? Um, we'll see more like that pretty soon, but first we're going to look at some other examples involving substitution.